you were to ask a hundred different people what they're looking for in a church, they'd probably give you a hundred different answers. A life-changing word, an anointed music ministry, a place of genuine love, care, and support, a multiplicity of programs and outreaches that extend beyond the walls of the church. Most people would look for a church with a strong foundation, yet is open and receptive to 21st century ministry applications and methodologies. That's our vision and our mission here at Greater Grace Temple, the City of David. I'm Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, Senior Pastor, and Amazing Grace starts right Grace now. and peace, beloved, and welcome to another telecast of Amazing Grace. I am your host, Bishop Charles H. Ellis III. I want you to call somebody and let them know that Bishop Ellis and Amazing Grace is on the air, and I've got a word that's going to bless you. But right now, our recording choir is coming with our third release single. It's entitled Favor. Let it bless you real good, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. In the Bible days, there was a widow woman that had a son, and they found themselves caught in the midst of a famine. The Bible says that they had a little cruise aboard and just a little meal. But God sent a man into her home to sustain her through the midst of the famine. And you know what that was? That was the favor of God. When I look at over my life Just take time to look over, over your life. Ways you made, how you brought me over God has brought you over hills and mountains. No food, no clothes could have been me. Without you, don't know where I'd be. Well, thank God you're that present help. You came and you changed my whole can change everything. I'm a witness. You make things all right. And make everything all right. I have always been right by my side. I'll tell the world your favor is on me. The favor of God. It'll change your situation. It will lift you when you're down. It will help you when it needs it. Come on, help me, Dorico. Over my life, all the ways you made, way you made how yeah. you brought me over. No food, no clothes, no no could have been me. Without you, Without you don't know where I, I don't would know where be. I would be. You, you can
I pray that you are blessed by our awesome music ministry. And don't forget, you can download any of the three releases that we have presented. That's Favored, Covered, and Done For Me on any of the digital music platforms that are available to you. I certainly pray that it bless you and it can continue to bless you. Download it. Help us out. Help us take all three of these all the way to the top. My message on today is entitled The Cost of Fear. The Cost of Fear. Paul tells his son in the gospel, Timothy, in his second letter, chapter one and verse number seven, he speaks these words to him. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The cost of fear. You know, I've learned there are all types of fear in this world. There is fear from violence. Many of us, we don't go out at night. Many individuals, they don't go out without somebody with them. They take extra precautions. When they go out, they have all kinds of securities on their home and they have all kinds of securities on their car because of the fear of someone that is going to take something that they have. The fear of someone that is going to do something ill will toward them. The fear of somebody that might be deranged or just someone who is evil that just might to want to do harm to you. And there's a cost to that fear. Sometimes you don't do things that you would love to do because you're afraid. Sometimes things you used to do that you enjoyed, those things are off the list now because you're fearful. The cost of fear. You have to pay extra money for security systems and, and you have those doorbell ring bells now that have the cameras and, and it's almost that you can't go anywhere now without there being a camera somewhere viewing the streets or viewing common areas. And guess what? A lot of us are okay with some of that because if something happens, we want to know who did it and we want them to pay the cost of fear. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the cost of fear is sometimes when you uh, have things that someone has taken from you, you don't even want to report it because you know that the cost of that, it's going to raise your insurance premiums. And, and now maybe your insurance is going to cancel you because you've got too many things that are happening that's costing the insurance company money. So they say, you're a bad risk. We're not going to insure you anymore. There are all kinds of fears in life. Uh, I can remember that we as kids, we were fearful when we did something our parents didn't tell us, to, told us not to do. We were fearful that they were going to put some corporal punishment on us. We called them whipping, spanking. Some of y'all called them beatings or whatever. <laughs> some people in my school called them killing. Man, my dad gave me a killing. I'm like, what's a killing? He was talking about a whipping. I never called mine a killing because uh, my dad had limits and boundaries. Yes, he would spank us with a black belt. Uh, and that was uh, the cost of uh, fear. You know, if you don't want to behave, if, if you want to do what somebody's telling you not to do, it's going to be a price that you're going to have to pay. But because we knew that that was the cost, we were fearful of that spanking. So we told the line and we walked the straight and narrow. Sometimes, wink, wink. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we were fearful of getting spankings or whippings. Now, Parents are fearful of even thinking about spanking a kid because now all the rules, all the laws have changed. All the ordinances are different in this day than they were in my day. Can't spank your children. You can't hit them regardless of whether it is a, 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 a corporal punishment or, or, or just an act to bring them back into what you've told them to do, obedience, can't do it now. Hmm, I'm wondering where were some of those laws when I was a kid? Because out of the seven of us, I think I got more spankings than any of my two brothers or my four sisters. And I got some camera people in here saying, so probably saying, yeah, you probably deserved it too. Well, yeah, I, I, I was only an angel on Sundays, but, you know, Monday through Saturday, I, 
I was, yeah, yeah, the, the devil was having it. No, I'm just kidding. But brothers and sisters, there are all kinds of fear in this world. All types of fear. Uh, but there's a price to fear. There's a cost to fear. And I think about individuals in the Bible that had God with them, but the enemy would come in and the devil would attack. And on many occasions, they left God, but they paid a price for it because there's always a cost to fear something God told you to do, but you did not do it because you were afraid. And now it has cost you then and maybe continues to cost you throughout the remainder of your life. Some things that God said do and you didn't do and some places God said he wanted you to go and you didn't go and some things that God wanted you to accomplish and you said, no, Lord, Lord, I'm afraid. I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can uh, uh, achieve that. I, I don't think that I can accomplish that. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the fear of failure can cost us. In other words, nothing stopping you and hindering you but yourself. Mm, I was preaching one time and I told the congregation, I said, uh, I'm not really a proponent of, of really moving the congregation by making them think that they got so many haters out here that, you know, people are stopping them from doing this or doing that. And, 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 you know, you can preach that message. And, you know, we preachers, we know how to get the crowd riled up. Yeah, God's going to deal with your haters. And, and yeah, people are hating on you, but God's going to deal with them and people to get excited. Oh, preach it. Say it, Reverend Priest. Yeah, because everybody jealous of me and everybody hating on me. And I, I, I just don't like to take people there because, mm, yeah, we got some people that talk about us and, and we have some people that, you know, are, are wishing us ill will. But at the end of the day, if God is going to bless me, then I am blessed because nobody can stop God from blessing me. Nobody can keep God from blessing me. Nobody can stop God from favoring me. Brothers and sisters, the word says that if I do what God says and in my ways please him, he will give me the desires of my heart. If I give my tithe and offering, he'll open up windows of heaven and pour me out blessings that there should not be room enough to receive. So, so maybe I'm not broke or maybe I'm not impoverished or maybe I'm not just uh, 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 robbing Peter to pay Paul and, and making it check to check because somebody's hating on me. Maybe I'm not doing what God requires of me. Maybe it's not always somebody else's fault that I'm not where I should be or where I could be or where I ought to be. Maybe it's not somebody else's fault that I have not achieved this or accomplished that. Maybe sometimes I need to look in the mirror. And as the Bible says, let every man examine himself. Yes, uh, I'm probably touching the nerve of somebody right now, but that's good. Because a sermon that never touches your nerve or a sermon that never has you thinking, mm, you might need to uh, challenge that sermon because the sermon, though, the word of God comes to convict us sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't come to encourage us all the time. It comes to convict us. It comes to reprove us. Come on. Is that not what Paul tells Timothy when he says, study to show thyself, approve a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth? And he tells us to preach the word in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Did you hear what he said? He said, reprove with the word, rebuke with the word. But yes, exhort with the word, with all long suffering and doctrine. Because the time will come when people will just want to hear that it's their haters uh, problem uh, that, that, or, or it's their haters uh, that, that keeps them from being who God wants them to be. It's their haters that keeps them from doing what God wants them to do. It's their haters that keep them from achieving things. And I like to say it to people sometimes, but I can't say it because you'll hurt people's feelings. Uh, you ain't even important enough to have a whole lot of haters. Somebody might have got offended. So let me, uh, let me just say it to myself, I'm not that important. Trust me, brothers and sisters. If I left here tomorrow, the world would go right on. Great Grace Temple would go right on. Uh, Detroit would go right on. The Detroit Lions would go, well, well, we're going to hold that one right now. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. And I love the song that says, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. 
It's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. It's not my sister or my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Sometimes when I look at my failures, I have nobody to blame but myself. Sometimes when I look at the things that I have not accomplished or the things I have not achieved or the places that I never made or the, or, or, or the, or the elevations that I never received, it has nothing to do with haters. It has everything to do with me and the decisions that I've made and the choices that I have chosen. Brothers and sisters, I believe that what God has for me, you can't stop it. The devil can't block it. But the devil can have me so preoccupied that everybody's hating on me and nobody likes me and I can feel comfortable in never doing anything and blame it on everybody else. I'm talking to somebody up in here. This, this, this word is for a whole lot of you. You need to call somebody and tell them to tune in right now because Bishop Ellis, he's touching a nerve. He's hitting it. And I believe I'm hitting it out of the park. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself. How many things has God had in store for me, but fear kept me away from it? How many things did God want me to accomplish, but fear? Uh, the fear of what people might say. The fear of the opposition that might rise up. The fear of maybe failing. And nobody held me back but me. Nobody said I couldn't do it but me because people can say all they want to say. But if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. I'm talking about the cost of fear. If you would go to the grave and if the grave could testify, individuals would probably be saying, yeah, I died with unfulfilled purpose without fulfilling my purpose. I died without fulfilling visions and dreams that God had given me. I died without achieving heights that God wanted me to achieve. And I have nobody to blame but myself. I believe that God has so much in all of us, you, me, and everybody that's viewing me. And you got to see things different and you got to stop focusing on everybody else and start looking under Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. That's right, my brothers and sisters. I believe that what God has for me, it is for me. And you can't stop it, nor can you block it. And shame on me if I'm holding myself back. Let me let you in on a secret. Maybe it's not a secret, but maybe to some of you it is. Because maybe you're going around testifying, yeah, the devil kept me from this. And the devil stopped me when I was trying to do that. And the devil hindered me when I was trying to get this or to receive that. Let me help you out. The devil can't stop you. The devil cannot block you. That is in God's purview. And that is in God's sovereignty alone. Oh, somebody said, well, Bishop, I'm not sure about that. Let me give you scripture. Job is one of the greatest men of all of those in the East. He has a life that anybody could dream of. He has no want. He has no lack. Everything he needs and things that he wants, he can get it just like that because God has blessed him mightily. The Bible says that Job is minding his own business. But the devil comes to present when the sons of God come to, be fear before, to appear before God. And he's looking for somebody to accuse. And God says, have you considered Job? The devil said, well, yeah, I see him over there. But uh, look, you've been way too good for him, for him to turn his back on you. And God says, you think that he's serving me for all that I've done for you? Maybe, just maybe he's serving me for who I am and not for what I've blessed him with. God gives the devil permission. Keyword, permission. Go and test Job. Go and tempt Job. And you can touch everything that he has, but don't touch him. And let's see what he's made of and what his conviction is all about. And you all know the story. Read the entire book of Job. It will bless you. That man lost everything just like that, but still said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave to me, and the Lord had taken away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, my brothers and sisters, Job was strong, wasn't living in fear, but he was living in faith. And when the uh, devil, when the devil te uh, tempted and touched his body, 
with boils and health challenges because God gave him permission. The key word, permission. The Bible says that he still did not lose his integrity. He declared all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until things turn in my favor. Scurry on down to the last chapter of the book of Job and you find out that when he prayed for his friends, God turned his whole situation and gave him twice as much as he had in the beginning and gave him more sons and daughters who had been killed in the testing and the tempting process. Yes, I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, I will not let fear keep me from being who God has called me to be. I will not let fear close doors when I know that I should be walking through those doors. Uh, look at the children of Israel. All they had to do when they crossed the Red Sea was to go in and possess the land. Twelve spies went in. They came back ten with a report. There are giants in the land and we are as grasshoppers in their sight. But Joshua and Caleb said we are more than able to possess the land for God will give them into our hands. But because they voted with the 10 and said, well, we don't want to go in because we don't want to die. God didn't bring us out here just to die. The Bible says that they walked around the same mountain for 40 years. Can you imagine walking around the same mountain, the same plain for 40 years? For 40 years, you're seeing the same old thing day after day, week after week, month after month. Every single day of your life for 40 years, you're just seeing and repeating what you've done. And some of you all are saying, Bishop, that's a shame. Israel ought to be ashamed of themselves. Listen, some of us have been talking the same stuff forever and a day. We're no further today than we were 10 years ago. We've been talking about getting that education, still don't have that education. We've been talking about leaving that job and becoming an entrepreneur and trusting God and stepping out by faith, and we still haven't done it. We've been talking about being a better person, but we still haven't done it. Well, how come you don't want to improve yourself? Well, because, you know, I'm fearful that I'm going to mess up again. I'm fearful I'm going to make a mistake again. I'm fearful. Brothers and sisters, fear will cost you your life. Fear will cost you your dreams, your aspirations, your goals. Fear will cost you your future. You got to be careful with that fear. Let me close by letting you know. There's one thing that God is not going to let you put on him. And that is your spirit of fear. That's why Paul tells Timothy, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. I don't know where fear came from. I got some ideas. <laughs> the devil, the enemy, the chief accuser of the brethren, he brought fear into your life. You better not do that because you know you're not going to be able to do it. You better not set out to wish for that because you know it's not going to come. You better not try to be better because you know you're going to revert to some of them old ways, brothers and sisters. Everybody that has tried to do something has failed at one point in time or another, but in many individuals' life, failure has not caused them to be defeated. They have tried over and over and over again. Somebody said nothing beats a failure but a try. So I'm here to encourage you. God didn't give you fear. He gave you faith. And brothers and sisters, if you can let your faith rise, if you can let that faith get to that place where it will be undamageable. In other words, at the end of the day, I believe, now I'm not talking about doing something God not called you to do, but I'm saying if you know God has spoken to you, if you know this is the season, if you know this is the time, then you've got to step out by faith and believe that it shall be just like he said. The cost of fear is heavy, brothers and sisters. The cost of fear is deadly. The cost of Fear will damage you until you cannot be repaired. But God is saying, I gave you power. Power over fear. Faith over fear. I gave you love. Even when evil is all around, 
overcome that evil with good or love. And I gave you a sound mind. That means he's given us power, love, and the ability to think right. And Lord, I pray that every open door you have for me, I will not stop myself because I'm afraid to fail. I will not stop myself because I'm afraid to embarrass myself. I will not stop myself because I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm going to trust you that if you spoke it, it shall be. If you said it, it shall come to pass. If you decreed it, it shall happen. On this day, my brothers and sisters, I hope this message has blessed you. You got to leave that fearful disposition and ascertain that faithful disposition. Yes, my brothers and sisters, faith over fear is a winning combination. But if you ever let fear rise above faith, then that's a defeatist and a destructive combination. I pray that on this day, you will rise in your faith and begin to believe God for the things that he has spoken in your life the things that he have spoken in your spirit and know that they shall come to pass, but you got to do something. Got to leave fear and begin to move in faith and know what God says is coming to pass. I pray that you've been blessed by this message on today. We've got some prayer counselors standing by the phone lines to receive your call and to help you any way they can to the best of their abilities. But listen, brothers and sisters, I want to pray for you now. Lord, I pray for each and every one viewing on today. I pray for those individuals that might be hiding in their spirit because they're just afraid to take that step, that leap of faith. Give them the courage and give them the strong will to believe you over the enemy's voice. For if you said it, you shall do it. Now I pray for everyone viewing that is sitting in the stoop and on the stoop of do nothing. I pray for everyone that might be hiding. I pray for everyone that might be insecure. I pray that you will give them everything that they need, the faith for this day, for this season, that they might walk into victory and not waddle in defeat. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I've got to go. My time is up. Thank you for tuning in on today. And listen, you have a great day and an even better rest of the week and know that we love you to life and there's nothing you can do about it. Now be blessed out there.